first time that I uh, saw anything similar to b-boying was on TV. And then uh, physically being there to see it done was first by my cousins up in the Bronx. And then I started seeing guys doing these corkscrew kind of spins and then going on the floor doing a sweep and then popping up. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's it. That's, I got to learn that, man. That's cool. The first time I ever saw something that intrigued me in a way where I felt like I had to live this was in a place called uh, 1130 Anderson Avenue. It's where I lived. Every weekend, I remember, they play a lot of music out of a particular person's apartment and people would get together and they would form a circle and they would battle. Now, of course, not understanding at age seven, seven, eight, what a battle is, but I was able to visually understand that one person was mocking another. And at that time, they were doing a lot of, you know, Bronx rocking is what we called, which was to do gestures to humi humiliate the other one, like grab the head, cut it, shake it up, throw it, cock the gun, and shoot it. And I remember like it was yesterday, I remember, we're in a circle watching, now mind you, at this time I'm just watching, there's a gentleman that jumped up in the air and went down to a pose, which now we call a freeze, of course, but everybody was completely mesmerized by it, especially me as a little boy, and it was that instant that I remember for me of when breaking b-boying started. My first experience with watching breaking b-boying happened in 1976. It was my brother, Robert Cologne, and he was actually in front of my house with Africa Islam of the uh, of the Zulu Nation. I was nine years old. I was looking at him and thinking, why is my brother throwing himself on the floor and embarrassing my family? Uh, my cousin comes to me a year later and tells me, you're rich. You got to come with me to the jam. I'm like, what? The jam, man. Yo, we going off, they're rocking, people are breaking, got MCs, uh, DJs, cut, you know, playing beats and blah, 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 all this stuff. It's not like I could think about, okay, wow, this is hip hop. No, because the word didn't exist like that yet, as a, as a de by definition. And I just fell in love with this environment. I was like, wow. It was the first time I ever wanted to dance without being afraid of, um, humiliation or insecurity or shyness. You know, that's when I felt like I was really born. When, you know, just like witnessing breaking. It started in the Bronx and part of Harlem. It started in Freeze's house. Oh, shut up! His mom used to break. She's a whole act in his own. Don't be talking about my mother now. Well, yeah, Billy, go, go, go. Mom, you just don't talk about my mother. The term B-boy, from what I know, from my perspective and what I live, originates from the word, uh, from the same Bronx boy. And then eventually it became the break boys and break girls and things like that. So it originated from being called the Bronx boy. Brooklyn style was more top rocking, more uh, um, Apache line, top rock, the rock. And then the Bronx was more get down on the floor, b-boy. We always called it b-boy. I also knew it as rocking. People in Manhattan used to call b-boy and rocking. The word breaking came from the music. You guys used to break, we used to break because the music we heard made us reach this, this breaking point. The music drove us so crazy and we felt so amazing that it made us do, break. That's not to say that versions of rocking, dancing on top didn't exist in other boroughs. I, I'll give props where props to do, but when it comes to the, what we consider the B-boy style, it's definitely the Bronx. Watch me now. Feel the groove. And there's something gonna make you move. We 
came from very aggressive surroundings. We were raised in the Bronx and... We were poor. It, you know, we had very little to look forward to in life. It is what gave us life. It, it's what gave us the opportunity to have social gatherings and build bridges between different cultures, different communities. Initially, it was a, a way of us to calm the static that was prevalent in the streets of New York at the time. This new dance form that was born a few years ago, I didn't know that I needed it in my life. I just wanted to be competitive, uh, practice, get some props. We were the kids who wanted to have a good time. We saw a lot of our friends and a lot of big brothers and cousins go get incarcerated, get hooked on smack, and we were like, nah, we don't want this. The killing's got to stop. That's when Bambada, Flash, and all the rest got together and uh, all the different crews from the Bronx and kind of united into this one family of uh, hip-hop, you know? They hear What happened in the 70s was very interesting because the dance itself was developing. You know, everything was very pure and organic. We kind of took what we saw and we kind of like played with it and added a few more gymnastic moves and, and more acrobatic moves. The other inspiration was kung fu movies. Like we, every Saturday we go to 40 doo -wop, 42nd Street in Times Square and we spent all day watching six, seven kung fu movies. Sometimes we would imitate how they fought and kind of utilize those methods in the way we moved without dancing, but with a different kind of rhythm. And then there's also the idea of being Puerto Rican and, and utilizing the dance steps from salsa, mambo, and things like that, that have a, a direct influence on us because we are Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, whatever. So the moves come from many different places, many different backgrounds. Uh, some gangsters, some church growers, <laughs> you know. We were a part of the second generation, I guess you could say, of b-boys. So all the other guys, the old guys, we looked up to them, we emulated them to a T. And then we go back into the basements of our friends' houses or into the hallways or the lobbies of the projects and just start practicing there. And that's how we formed crews. And then uh, we, uh, we formed local crews in our neighborhood, like the Young City Boys, the Da Boys, uh, Salso Brothers. The Mexican crew, the Seven Deadly Sins, Rockwell Association, um, the TBB, uh, the Incredible Crew, the Suicide Crew. Every crew had a little chapter of B-Boys in it. It was just incredible at the time. Everyone had different shirts, everyone, you all knew who was who. 